Hello everybody and welcome to your next Allegro HD tutorial. If you're wondering about the lack of videos that have been going on lately or occurring lately, then please check out the brand new video that I made today that was posted on my channel called Android Development and the Future of Coding Made Easy. Now let's get started on this tutorial. What you want to do is to include the string class and you'll want to create a function called key pressed and inside it you want to create an int integer variable and I will call it key value now um, f as for the function that's not going to be the vital part of this but I'm just going to be showing you various ways you can go about doing single key presses uh, this tutorial is going to span about two or three videos showing you different methods you can go about doing sh um, key presses so the method I'm teaching you today, the main method, is um, a method that I've, I see um, across the internet. It's not my recommended way to do it because it's not completely precise, but it's a very easy way to get off to a good start. And um, the reason why I don't use this is because it only detects key presses and it doesn't detect key releases as well. And sometimes you need to detect if a key is released also or like you need to check if a mouse is released or whatever uh, say you're making a paint program and you click to draw a line or whatever and you drag the line and you're holding down the mouse button you need to detect that once you release the mouse button then it will fully draw that line to the screen and if you don't understand that concept then it's okay but basically key releases can be just as, as important as key presses so let's get started so if we scroll down to our program you see that I've created a string called options um, with um, and it's array of four and um, a r option zero is new game options one is load game options two is options and options three is credits okay and um, I've created an integer variable called option that is going to cycle through each one of these options names and highlight them, highlight which number we're on. And you'll see what it's like at the end of the tutorial, what it's supposed to look like. So, um, there's a function in Allegro called key pressed, and it does what its name's called. It detects to see if a key is actually pressed. So, we don't want to check for single key presses if a key isn't pressed. That's just a waste of time and a waste of space. So if the key is indeed pressed, then we use a switch statement to detect which key was pressed and what we should do with it. If you don't know what a switch statement is, I advise you to go back to your basics. Um, if, you, if you don't feel like it, it's basically a simplified version of an if statement. Um, so it can't do everything an if statement can do, but it can do a lot of what it does. So uh, just like what it says right here, this is basically would say if to condition then you would check for these things and this would be like the else if whatever this would be like else like if key down else if key up whatever blah 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 but they use different wording so if you don't know about switch statements then you can learn about that on Google or I have a tutorial on it um, one of my first earlier tutorials but anyways um let's continue so in our switch statement we say switch um read key um two right stream operators and the number eight and you guys are like what the hell is that well um read key if you remember in our earlier tutorials we used to do read key before return zero so in the window wouldn't close right away it would wait until we actually press a key and then it would continue in the program what read key does is it actually actually essentially reads the key and then it has a value stored in memory and when we put the two right stream operators and we put the number eight what this is doing is it's changing it to scan code so it's changing this from computer code to scan code so we can detect it using the wording key down key up etc etc right so basically saying that um so we say switch so if read key if a key is pressed then we want to detect which key was pressed and this is how we do it with read key and we change the scan code using the two right stream operators and the number eight and there's ways to change it to ASCII code 
and to change the different types. Those are for later tutorials when I get into advanced keyboard routines. So after we ch change the scan code, we say if the key was pressed down, if the down key was pressed, then we add one to options and we put break to end the switch case statement. And then if the up key was pressed, then we put we subtract option and we have break. And for the rest of the update, we save options less than zero, then we set it to zero. And if it's greater than three, then we set it to three so it doesn't go out of bounds. And then in our draw, um, draw routines, we f we scroll, we do from zero to i is zero, and we go till i is less than four, and we increment it by one. And what we're doing is basically we're cycling through each of these options to draw these to write these things on the screen. So we're gonna write new game, load game, options, and credits. And notice we use um, text out center ex. So we're just basically drawing these into center of the screen with a little bit of math and stuff right here. This should be e relatively easy to you. So we're drawing these in red. Then and we have another text out center ex on the bottom, which says, notice the the difference right here. There's no difference except for we replace i with the word option. And what this is doing is that we're drawing over the selected word and then we're changing it to the color yellow. So we're basically overlapping that specific word with the color yellow and then it will look like it's highlighted. Then we blit everything, we blit the buffer to the screen, we clear the bitmap, destroy the buffer, exit Allegro and everything else. So I'm just going to run the program now and I'm going to do a quick run through in case any of you got confused along the way. So once you run the program, um, okay, sorry. I don't think we're using this function for this tutorial. This will be for next tutorial. So once I run this, Okay, so we get the screen and notice that new game is highlighted because um, that's the option we're at. So if I press a down key, it highlights load game. It's basically rewriting load game over again on the exact same position and writing it over the previous load game that we, we wrote. And if you don't want to do that in case you feel like it would take up too much memory, which it really wouldn't, but if you feel like you want to conserve energy, then there's always ways that you could be like, um, you can make a for loop and say like if, um, I could say like if, if I is equal to option, then you put continue and then basically that won't, it won't draw in this iteration of the loop. So if I was to take this out, Let's see what we'd get. So notice it won't draw a new game because we said that if i is equal to option, then we don't draw it. So if you really don't want to overlap it, then you can always do this method and it won't overlap it. If you if you're really like a memory freak and really like want to conserve memory, then that's a way you could go about it as well to let you know. But yeah, this is essentially how the program should work. Now another one thing you guys are probably saying is that like when I hold down the down button at first it kind of like you press it down and it kind of stalls and it just scrolls down it scrolls down and up through it right and um essentially sometimes you guys might like that but essentially other times you just want it to like you want to you want to press it once and it won't move until you release it and press the button again and then that's what I'm saying that where you might want it to be more precise and that's and the way to make it more precise will come in the next tutorial <coughs> sorry so um, that's it for this tutorial right now um, I'm probably gonna make a next tutorial right about right now <coughs> sorry with the second method and um, you'll know how to do single key presses with two different methods after that tutorial so thanks for watching this hope you enjoyed it and bye